ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो 7 चैप्टर 6 प्रलाद इंस्ट्रक्ट्स हिज डेमोनियक्स गोमेट्स टेक्स्ट नंबर 11 टू 13 इफ वी रीड 11 टू 13 रिपीटेड दैट वुड बी द होल क्लास सो वी जस्ट गोना रीड वन वर्स कथा एंड देयर ऑल लॉन्ग वर्सेस कथाम प्रियाया अनुकंपिताय संगम रहस्यम रुचि रमशम मंत्रन सुरितु तत्स्नेह सिता शुशु सुशुनम कलाकलाक्षराणम अनुरक्तचित्तक कथम प्रियानुकंपिताय संगम रहस्युचिर क्षमात्र सुषु तत्स्नेहासीथिषुन कलाक्षराणम अनुरक्तक्षिथक कलाक्षरा कलाक्षरा <laughs> कथम प्रियानुकंपिताय कलाक्षरानुरक्तचिता कथम हाउ प्रिया डियर मोस्ट वाइफ अनुकंपिता ओवेस अफेक्शनेट एंड कंपैशनेट संगम दिसोसिएशन रहस्यम सॉलिटरी रुचिरन वेरी प्लीजिंग एंड एक्सेप्टेबल चार एंड मंत्रन इंस्ट्रक्शंस सुरितु टू द वाइफ एंड चिल्ड्रन तत्स्नेहासिता being bound by their affection shri shunam to the small children kala aksharanam speaking in broken language anarakthita person whose mind is attracted and so on so translation purport by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shri prabha translations as long as the purport <laughs> so if you can remember this translation you get special credit 
How can a person who is most affectionate to his family, the core of his heart being always filled with their pictures, give up their association? So, if we can have pictures of Krishna in our heart, our life would be perfect. But it seems it's easier to have pictures of your wife and family in your heart than it is to have Krishna. Specifically, wife is always very kind and sympathetic and always pleases her husband in a solitary place. Who can give up the association of such a dear and affectionate wife? Of course, it was written 5,000 years ago. (laughs) I think times have changed. Small children talk in broken language, very pleasing to hear, and their affectionate father always thinks of their sweet words. How could he give up their association? One's elderly parents and one's sons and daughters are also very dear. The daughter is especially dear to her father, and while living at her husband's house, she always she is always in his mind. Who could give up that association? Aside from this, in household affairs, there are many decorated items of household furniture, and there are also animals and servants. Who could give up such comforts? The attached householder is like a silkworm which weaves a cotton in which it becomes imprisoned, unable to get out. Simply for the satisfaction of two important senses, the genitals and the tongue, one is bound by material condition. How can one escape? Anyone have an idea? There's a lot of questions here. Anyone have the answer? Okay. Maybe the answer is in the purple. <laughs> in household affairs, the first attraction is the beautiful and pleasing wife who increases household attraction more and more. One, is wife, one enjoys his wife with two prominent sense organs, namely the tongue and the genitals. The wife speaks very sweetly, this is certainly an attraction. She, prepare, she then, then she prepares very palatable foods to satisfy the tongue. And when the tongue is satisfied, one get, gains strength in the other sense organs, especially the genitals. Thus the wife gives pleasure in sexual intercourse. Household life means sex life. Yanmut maitu naidi grihamedi sukam hitu cham. This is encouraged by the tongue. Then there are children. A baby gives pleasure by speaking sweet words in broken language. And when the sons and daughters are grown up, one becomes involved in their education and marriage. Then there are one's own father and mother to be taken care of. And one also becomes concerned with the social atmosphere and with pleasing his brothers and sisters. Man becomes increasingly entangled in household affairs, so much so that Leaving them be, be, becomes almost impossible. As the householder becomes griha under kupam, a dark well in which the man has fallen. For such a man to get out is extremely difficult, unless he is helped by a strong person, the spiritual master, who helps the fallen person with a strong rope of spiritual instructions. Fallen person should take advantage of this rope. And then the spiritual master of the Supreme Personality of Godhead will take him out of the dark well. So the translation again, in case you've forgotten part of it. (laughs) How can a person who is most affectionate to his family, the core of his heart, always being filled with their pictures, give up their association? Specifically, a wife is always very kind and sympathetic and always pleases her husband in a solitary place. Who could give up the association of such a dear and affectionate wife? Small children talk in broken language, very pleasing to hear, and their affectionate father always thinks of their sweet words. How could he give up their association? One's elderly parents and one's sons and daughters are also very dear. A daughter is especially dear to her, to her father, and while living at her husband's house, she is always in his mind. Who could give up that association? Aside from this, in household affairs, there are many decorated items of household furniture, 
There are also animals and servants. Who could give up such comforts? The attached householder is like a silkworm, which weaves a cocoon in which it becomes imprisoned, unable to get out. Simply for the satisfaction of the two important senses, the genitals and the tongue, when it's bound by material conditions, how can one escape? Om Vishnu Vrayan Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vrayanta Swami Tanamane Namaste Sarasatun Deve Gauravani Vajarane Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paskatyade Satarana The beginning of the translation talks about affection. That it seems all very sweet. People are very affectionate to each other. But then at the end it talks about the tongue and the genitals. That affection is really based upon satisfying the tongue of the generals. It's not as romantic as it might seem. So they go together. If the generals and tongue are satisfied, then affection develops. And affection develops, and one tries to satisfy the tongue of the generals. And of course, there are many other attractions, all reflections of our actual spiritual engagement and the, the chirping of the children, the sweet words of the wife, taking the control of the parents and the household, the servants and the animals, because now the animals means a dog who shows its affection by licking your face with its beautiful tongue. So in that way, everyone is bound by material consciousness, if you're in the mode of passion. Generally speaking, people are in the mode of ignorance, and so they have no attachment for anything, except for, as it says in the end of Kali Yuga, simply people will be interested in gratifying their genitals. Everything else is secondary. But in passion and household life, it's a little bit more subtle. There's a little bit more decorations, but to do the same thing a little bit better arrangements, because unless these arrangements are made, unless one is at least in the mode of passion, then it's very hard to keep a steady supply of food for the stomach and satisfaction for the generals. Therefore, passionate life is actually meant to simply constantly try to satisfy the senses. And along with that, comes our change of consciousness. You can't have one without the other. We can endeavor to try to gratify our senses, and at the same time try to become conscious of Krishna. As Krishna says, chittam aparayam cha pralayam tam upashitya kamapapoga paramam etavam iti nischita asya pashya sutarabhara kamakrota parayana ihanti kamabhogarata anenarta sanjaya that they believe that to gratify the senses under the end of life is the prime necessity of human civilization. So modern civilization, that's all they're concerned about, economic development, and how much you're able to gratify your senses. Therefore, they're not even concerned about keeping people healthy, or if you fall sick to get you healthy, they're interested in making money from your dead body or your living body so they can gratify their senses. There's no other higher purpose of life. Helping people is not very important in this age. Exploiting people, uh, that's considered to be quite intelligent. You're considered to be a good person if you become expert expert at exploiting others. And then you can economically develop. You can collect unlimited money for no purpose at all other than getting the satisfaction that you're able to exploit more people than anyone else. And what is the mentality that develops? Idam te nad kapaskaya evakta. Oh, I see that's right. Ya idam paramam, ya imam paramam, ya idam paramam guyam, ya idam te nad kapaskaya, idam na kapaskaya.
Idam adhyam ayah labdva imam prapse manoratam. Idam asti em apime bhavishati paradhanam. Adyo hadak, adyo hipa, adyo hipa, let's see. Idam, idam adhyam ayah labdva imam prapse manoratam. Idam asti em apime bhavishati paradhanam. Asomaya hatak shatra hanishe chaparana pi. Ishvara ham ham bogi sira ham balavan suki. Adyo bi janavan asmi konyosti sadri shomaya. Yakshe dashamin modisha ityagena bi mohitaha. So much is mine today. Maybe someone here has a feeling that something belongs to them. Even our very near and dear body we think belongs to us. How dare Krishna give us so much instruction? He confuses me. I have so many other things I got to do. And he's told me to do so many things. It doesn't fit into my schedule. Sorry, Krishna. So much things have I acquired today. And tomorrow I'll even get more. So much wealth do I have. And I'll get more and more of a claim to my schemes. He is my enemy. And I've killed him. All my other enemies are going to be killed. Ah, I'm the Lord of everything. I am perfect. I am powerful. And I'm happy. <laughs> I'm surrounded by rich and aristocratic relatives. So it's, this is being mentioned here. All these people. I don't acquire all this wealth so they can all come and look at me and say, Oh, Sah- Sahib, oh, you're so wealthy. We surrender to you. We'll give up all our religious duties and surrender to you. I am surrounded by rich and aristocratic relatives. I'll perform some sacrifice. I'll give some charity. And thus I'll rejoice. In this way, the demoniac is bewildered by ignorance. In other words, this whole bodily concept of life expands as we... According to our false ego, we engage in the bodily concept of life. Maya will introduce new and bigger things for us to get involved in. So that there's no time for Krishna consciousness. There's too many things to serve. If you have one car, it's quite an endeavor to serve your car. It's almost probably having a horse previously was a lot simpler. You didn't have to go out and work to, to get fuel for your horse. He just put it outside. He'd eat the grass. You didn't have to, I mean, clean your horse. I mean, so you threw some water over it. Maybe brushed it down a little bit. You didn't have to spend the whole Sunday cleaning your horse. And you didn't have to have any insurance on the horse. Because no one would ever give you an insurance on the horse. <laughs> and... If something went wrong with your horse, you took it to the vet, or the vet came by. <laughs> you didn't have to exchange parts. You didn't have to buy elaborate parts for your horse. So having a horse, and the horse gave you the more or less the same thing. It took you from one place to the next. And of course, there weren't elaborate roads because there wasn't any reason to go anywhere. You can get everything you needed right where you were. You'd have to go to the grocery store, go outside and pick some, some fruits and vegetables. You didn't have to go to the hardware store because there was no hardware store. You didn't have to go to the anything, computer store or electronics store because there's no electronics. You make a few candles. When the sun went down, you went to sleep. Not very difficult. You didn't need electric lights because there's nothing to see. Maybe there were a few books, but you read them during the day. And therefore, you didn't have to go to the optometrist. There were all these horrible foods, so your teeth didn't rot. You hardly, people hardly got sick, so you didn't need a, de- a doctor. So all these things that were created monocilization are just the results of trying to do things which are, we're not supposed to be doing. 
we're creating our own problems. And we think, oh, how horrible we have to go back to this civilization where there's no more air pollution, all these nice things, all this, you can breathe in all this. You don't need to breathe metals in your body. You don't have to worry about having enough metals. You can just breathe them in. Hopefully there is a little nutrition in some of the things you're breathing in. You don't have to worry about not having clean water. All the water is clean because there's nothing to contaminate it with. And therefore it tasted good. You didn't need soda because the water tasted better than soda. You didn't need elaborate foods because even the simple foods tasted wonderful. And they were prepared with some concern and love. The wife would, and grandmother would bake a nice pie, home-baked pies, nice salads. Everything was tasteful, nicely made, on time. It was all fresh. There were no refrigerators. So now we've become more advanced. <laughs> and everyone's simply worried. Am I going to get cancer, coronavirus, this and that? Simply they're worried about everything. She loves me. Who's she going to want to run away with? Who is he seeing secretly? What kind of drugs are my children taking? So this is advancement. And people are actually believing they're actually on top of the world. We're actually they're on the lowest part of the existence. So here Prahlad Maharaj, although he's five years old, he seems to have gotten some insight into what life is all about. And the conclusion is that one should try to take advantage of the instructions to get out of this material conception of life. It is not that one should give up household life, but the illusion that actually household life is meant to gratify the senses instead of utilizing Krishna service. Because if one utilizes things in Krishna service, the senses will actually be gratified because one will not be doing things out of lust. If one does things out of lust, then the result of doing things out of lust, there'll be more lust. But if one does things without lust, then there's no lust. And if one does things that please Krishna, then one becomes pleased by Krishna. And therefore the very activity makes one satisfied without any lust. Oh, the minimum amount of loss, of course. In any case, if one does things in Krishna consciousness, even if there is some lust, that will gradually become purified. So the whole idea is the instruction for the householder is not to abandon household life, but to engage in Krishna service with the family. Then the family will actually see with each other, each other in a different perspective, not as objects of exploitation, but as objects of service to Krishna. And if Krishna is there, then one actually will become affectionate both to Krishna and things in relation to Krishna. And therefore, actual love and affection for each other will develop along with affection for Krishna and everyone and everything else. And without that, there is simply selfishness, which will result in simply endlessly increasing one's material desires without any satisfaction or help or alleviation from this unfortunate and very unnecessary and convenient material existence. So I'll we'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions? Maharaj. <clears throat> Thank you for the lecture. I have a question um, about Prahlad Maharaj. Uh, do we have any information how he was then living his life, like uh, as a householder or as a Brahman? Yeah, he chanted Hare Krishna every day. Hare Krishna? Yeah, he chanted Hare Krishna. He offered all his food to Krishna. He attended all the programs. Hare Krishna. <laughs> that much we know. He was always remembering Lord Yashinga Day. So, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> Any
And he followed all the principles. What's that? Okay. Earliest we've ever in the class. Grantara Shaman Bhagavatam Kidai Prabhupada Kidai or Brahmananda.